in the Hollywood Blonde bombshell tradition of Monroe and Mansfield comes Goldie? Right. AMC presents Golden Girl Goldie Hawn, as kooky and clever as ever, in her most captivating role to date. He tried to murder me, but I stabbed him with a needle. Uh, narcotics, huh? No knitting. She's good as gold in the madcap comedy thriller, Foul Play. Saturday on AMC. From the network that obsesses about creativity comes inside the actor's studio with your favorite artist delving into their craft at the place where it all began. The newspapers say there's no other series like it on TV. But why would there be? Inside the Actors Studio. See for yourself every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Bravo, the Film and Arts Network. Call your cable company. The movie we're about to see, Bend in the River, was made back in 1952, a time in Jimmy Stewart's career when he realized that he needed a change to his screen image. Up to this time, he'd been the all-American innocent in films like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, You Can't Take It With You. With the end of uh, World War II, screen audiences demanded tougher films, though, and uh, more hard-edged heroes, and Stewart was determined to move ahead with the times. He made his first Western back in 1939. That was Destry Rides Again. But that was really more, I think, a musical than you would have to classify it as a Western. His first serious uh, Western was Broken Arrow. That co-starred Jeff Chandler. And next was Winchester 73, the film which brought James Stewart uh, together for the first time with uh, director Anthony Mann. Well, they made eight motion pictures together. The movie we're about to see was the second of those. With that, here's James Stewart in Bend in the River. Next on AMC, Marilyn Monroe's plot to kill her husband takes an ironic twist in a thrilling mystery directed by Henry Hathaway. Niagara, co-starring Joseph Cotton, next. Most directors would just jump at the chance to work with the hottest and the sexiest box office attraction of all time, but Henry Hathaway was not most directors. It was 1953, and Daryl Zanuck of 20th Century Fox assigned Hathaway to direct Marilyn Monroe in the movie we are about to see. Hathaway had heard that Marilyn was kind of temperamental and very difficult to work with, and he was also not completely convinced that she was as talented as so many people kept telling him that she was. But in spite of all of this, a short time later, he found himself on location in Niagara Falls, New York, filming the first scene for this movie, Niagara, it's called. It was a complicated tracking shot uh, following Marilyn Monroe as she walked across this very, very long tourist overlook. Well, to his absolute astonishment and delight, she did it all in one take. One of the longest walking shots probably in the history of film. Well, if there was nothing else Marilyn Monroe could do, she could walk, you had to admit that. Co-starring with two of the nation's most fabulous and flamboyant beauty spots, Marilyn Monroe and Niagara Falls, you will find in this film Joseph Cotton, whose intense performance as an emotionally unstable war veteran almost steals the whole picture from Marilyn, and Jean Peters, who was always just wonderful. Here they are in Niagara. <laughs> 